What's up everyone? Welcome back. This video we're going to be talking about loops, which are when things are repeated. 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 Okay, so where do we begin? First thing is the sponsor. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. And yeah, now let's get back into loops. So if you've been through loops before, maybe they're confusing, maybe they're complicated, or maybe you have it down. Whatever it is, I'd recommend you watch this video because I'm going to try to take the concept and make it very nice and simple. So it's so simple that I went to check my notes for this video and I had like one sentence. So apparently when I was writing this, I was like, eh, I've done this a thousand times, just do it from memory. Either that or I was like, I don't feel like it and I just moved on to the next one. <laughs> the core pieces are very easy to memorize once you have this acronym down, ICU. So this is how I remember the structure for a loop. So an example of a loop is, let's say you want to say something to a user 10 times, or you might want to ask the user something until they get it right. Or you might want to use a loop to go through a collection of items. Loops are super, super useful and fundamental for building complex applications, so make sure you get this information down. So let's go through a simple loop known as a while loop. So the way this works is we're first going to initialize a variable. And this is kind of going to keep track of where we are in the loop. You know, how are we going to basically make progress in our loop if we don't have some way to keep track of where we are? So that's where that's this initialization comes in. We start with a variable. It's usually something like a variable named i. So we'll say int i equals zero. Then what we do is we say while, which is a keyword, so we just type it out, and we put the parentheses and we put the curly braces just like an if statement or a switch. This is the general structure. Now in here, we're going to do a condition. This tells us when the loop stops. So basically we're going to start, let's say here, we're going to progress until that condition is no longer true. So we start here, this is the initialization, and we progress through this loop, and at some point we stop. And that stopping is defined by that condition. So a very common one you're gonna see is i is less than 10, for example. So this loop is going to run while this is true. Then inside of here, we have that last piece, the U, and it's the update. And that usually looks something like I++, plus plus, which will increase I one, one number. So the way this is going to work is we start with an initialization, in this case a zero, and we go until the condition I is less than 10, so as long as that's true, and the update is like the progress, how we get there. We start at zero, we update by one each time, and we keep doing that as long as i is less than 10. Once i is 10, we're done. So the stopping point, i is going to be equal to 10. How many times is this loop going to execute? It's going to execute 10 times. One for zero, all the way up to nine. So it's gonna be zero through nine, and then once i is 10, it's done, it's not gonna be executed again. So that, my friends, is the functionality for loops. All the other loops work in a very similar way. They have an initialization, a condition, and an update. So this doesn't really do anything, it just counts, so what's the purpose? Where do we put our code? Well, our code actually goes right here. So for example, one thing you could do is you could output i. And I'm running out of space. Yeah, you guys get the point. Basically, right here I'm outputting the i variable, and what this loop will do is it'll actually count from zero to nine. And that's basically what we're gonna be doing in the next video, so you're already a step ahead. <laughs> so this is the while loop. There are two other loops you should know about, which is the do while loop and the for loop. The difference between a while loop and a do while loop is that the while loop, the code, happens after the condition. For a do while loop, it's going to execute at least once. So the code's gonna be executed, and then the condition will be checked. 
So if you want to do something that executes at least once, maybe you're asking the user for a password or you're, ask, or you're showing a menu, and you want to do it at least once all the time, then you might be interested in the do while loop. Generally, you can use any of the loops to get the job done, but there's usually one that's more fitting. So for example, if you want to do something at least once, use a do while loop. If you want to do it zero or more times, then use a while loop. So we'll talk about the do while loop, we'll get some practice with that, but for now just understand the while loop, and now we're going to talk about the for loop. The for loop works exactly the same way as the while loop, it's just positioned a little bit different, the syntax is a little bit different, but the functionality is essentially the same. So with the for loop, all of these pieces are going to be set up front, so it's going to look like this. Same thing, we got the parentheses and then we have the curly braces. We have the initialization, so we could say int i is equal to zero. Then we have the condition, we could say i is less than 10. And in between these we have semicolons. And then we have the update i++. And then we could put our code in here. So that is the same exact thing, but now it's a for loop. Works the same way, it's just syntactically different. Personally, I like for loops. But generally, I'll use for loops when I know the number of times something is going to be executed. I'll use while loops when I don't necessarily know ahead of time how many times it's going to be executed. What do I mean? Well, you can actually make something known as an indefinite loop. And the way an indefinite loop works is it's basically just going to keep running indefinitely until it's told to stop. So instead of stopping at some condition, we're just going to say while true, for example. So the condition is always true and it's just going to keep executing and once something happens to stop the loop, we'll just break out of that loop which we'll talk about here in a couple videos. So that is your summary for loops. In conclusion, there are three main loops. We have the while loop, the do while loop, which we didn't really go through the syntax on that, but we'll get into that later. And then we have the for loop, which works exactly the same as the while loop. It just comes down to personal preference and when you might want to use which. Like I said, I'll use for loops when I want to go through it 10 times, for example, and I'll use while loops when I want to go through it indefinitely. So yeah, that's the concepts for loops. Now we're going to get hands-on, go onto the computer, type some loops out, and it's going to be lots and lots of fun, so definitely check it out. And if you've enjoyed this content, do me a favor and subscribe, because how else am I going to take over the internet? Not without your help, definitely need that. So go click that subscribe button, and I'll be uh, very grateful. Thank you, guys.